Instagram and YouTube if you're watching the playback. Welcome to another weekly live with yours truly, Dr. Sarah Webb of Colorism Healing. Today's topic is practical strategies for radical love for natural black hair and all of its textures, but especially type 4 hair, 4C hair. Before we jump into that, I always like to have people say hello and let me know where you're tuning in from. I like to know where people are watching from in the world, around the country. And let me know what the weather is like too. Makes me feel like we're in the same place, right? Like we're, you know, not only live in time, but together in space of some sort. And I do have a few announcements, my usual announcements. One, I do this every week. So if this is your first time joining, you can watch recordings or playbacks of previous episodes and discussions I've had on IGTV or YouTube. And you can also participate going forward in lives on various topics. I do take recommendations for topics. Sometimes people ask me questions in DMs or in comments and I flag those as potential topics for future conversations. And I also offer other initiatives such as speaking. I teach workshops. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching is new this year. So if you're interested in any of those things, check out my website, which is linked in my bio on both Facebook and Instagram. So very simple announcements that I have for today. And I see we have some North Carolinians in the house. Humid. <laughs> hey, Christina from North Carolina. It is humid. I'm living in the Midwest in Springfield, Illinois. And Springfieldians insist that it's hot and humid here. And me being from South Louisiana, I always tell Springfieldians, Y'all don't know hot and humid. <laughs> Y'all do not know hot and humid. I walked to the coffee shop today. It's about a 25 minute walk, right? So a 25 minute walk in the middle of June, in the middle of the day, and I don't break a sweat. Like if I were in Louisiana, if I were in Baton Rouge, my clothes would have been soaked through with sweat by the time I got to my destination. But you know, like here in Springfield, I can walk for 25 minutes in, in the middle of June and not break a sweat it's really nice actually it's kind of nice um hey from germany it's 23 degrees celsius now to be honest i don't really know the conversion between celsius and fahrenheit <laughs> it's my bad i never i didn't really pay attention to that in math i kind of was like yeah 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 you know converged converting meters to feet celsius to fahrenheit whatever right just give me the grade so i can go on um, but thank you for tuning in from Germany. I know it's probably late in the evening where you are. Um, we have 91 in Massachusetts today. Wow, that's really hot. <laughs> um, not used to it. Only lasted 10 minutes outside. I bet. 91 is hot even for me, right? And I'm someone who doesn't get hot until about 75 degrees. 91 is hard on everybody, right? Um, no problem. <laughs> it's 9 p.m. Yeah, okay, okay, so that's good. Not too, too late. 9 p.m. is still doable for most people. Um, all right, I see one person watching on Facebook, so feel free to introduce yourself and let me know where you're tuning in from as well. Okay, so let's jump in. As I mentioned last week, I was going to come back on and continue the discussion about how we feel about natural black hair. Oh, 74 Fahrenheit. Thank you. See, <laughs> you clearly did better in school than I did when it came to science and math and temperatures. <laughs> um, so we're going to continue that discussion on hair. And last week we talked about the history of why there's so much stigma around natural black hair and why there's so much shame amongst black people about wearing natural hair or seeing other people wear natural hair, why there's so much fear around going natural and why people are afraid to wear their natural hair to work and things like that. So last week, if you didn't catch it, watch the playback on either YouTube or IGTV and you know, kind of see where I'm coming from in terms of talking about 
why there's so much shame, fear, and stigma related to natural black hair. And as promised this week, I'm gonna focus on strategies for developing love for natural black hair. And again, this applies to everyone. Even non-black people should learn to love natural black hair. For example, last week we talked about racist policies that barred people from wearing natural hairstyles to work or black hairstyles to work. And a lot of times it's non-black people making those policies, right? And so we, yes, we need as black people to learn to love and affirm our natural hair, but systemically in terms of the politics and the, the discrimination against natural black hair, we need for our culture collectively to recognize the value, the worth, the beauty of, and even just the normalcy of natural black hair, right? I think a basic goal would be to just make it normal it's still, even in 2021, um, not a normal thing to see, right? And here in Springfield, Illinois, there are not a lot of black women who choose to wear their natural hair. Even if it's natural, technically, they prefer to wear a wig over it or you know, wear extensions with it. And so it's extremely rare in a lot of places around the world to see black women specifically choose natural hair. But we can, there are things we can do. There are things we can do to change the attitudes that we have been brought up with. There are things we can do to change the narrative about the value and the worth of natural hair textures. And so I wanna talk about that today. So I'm gonna to kinda of go over the natural hair rules that I do not follow. I kinda of mentioned those last week, but I didn't explicitly talk about them. And then I'm gonna share some practical strategies that I sh shared in my Instagram post. And then I'm gonna close out with audience suggestions. So I'm gonna read some of the comments that people left on my posts in terms of what they've done to develop love and respect and appreciation for their own natural hair. And then obviously anyone watching live who wants to add their suggestions or recommendations, if you want to add your two cents about how we can all learn to love, really love natural black hair. Right, we good to go? Yeah? <laughs> uh, oh, he said, yeah, no, it was Google. <laughs> gotcha, yeah. If I weren't live, I would have Googled it too. That's how I answer everything. And you don't have to stay quiet. You're more than welcome to respond, chat as much as you want. So the natural hair rules, just to recap them that I didn't follow, and I'll talk more about why, right? The first one was I don't have natural hair goals. Um, when I was first going natural, being an undergrad and stuff, I, I would often hear people say, well, I'll go, I would go natural if I could get my hair to look like hers, right? So they'll point to a woman who's like, oh, I love her hair. If I could get my hair to go to be like that, then I'll go natural. And so for me, it's the, the point of being natural for me, this is just my approach to it, is to just accept my hair the way it is, right? And so I don't care how long it gets. I'm not trying to achieve a certain length or a certain curl pattern um, or a certain level of shine or sheen. Um, for me, natural is not just a style, right? But it's sort of a, an approach, right? Or a, a way of being, a way of moving and showing up in the world that says, I don't have to have goals to try and make myself look a certain way. And we can apply that to an analogy of skin tone, right? I don't have goals for my skin tone, right? I don't, I'm not hoping that my skin tone gets darker. I'm not hoping that my skin tone gets lighter. It just is what it is, and I love that. However it decides to look on any given day, any given season, right? I'm satisfied with that. And so I kind of apply the same philosophy to my hair as well. The other thing was I don't use protective styles, right? And a lot of people, use protective styles, one, because they find it easier, right, for them. And also because if you want your hair to grow, if that is your goal, then protective styles can help your hair to grow faster. Since I don't care if my hair gets longer, it is getting longer. This is the longest I've gone without cutting my hair since going natural. And um, so it's just getting longer because I'm not cutting it. But I'm not trying to make it grow longer. I'm not trying to make it grow faster. And so for me, it's easier to not 
use protective hairstyles. It's easier for me to just go to sleep with my hair out. Um, yeah, but that's just me. Like, I have a very laid back, kind of lazy, um, low maintenance approach to my hair in general. The other thing that, you know, another myth about natural hair is that you have to have tons of products. Um, I was watching a black lady sketch show on HBO. Love the show. A black lady sketch show is like one of the funniest things um, I've seen on TV in a long time. But there, you know, some com a comedy, one of the sketches was about someone opening a suitcase of natural hair products and all of the women like fawning over like all of the the oils and the you know creams and things like that and i just use shampoo conditioner and one moisturizer whenever i'm doing my hair right so i don't apply multiple products to my hair and then if i get a shampoo and conditioner combined into one then it's just two bottles that i'm using um, and so again this is an approach this is an alternative to that right so it's totally fine if you are really into hair care and you want to you know use lots of products or experiment with lots of products but for those who are maybe looking for something with lower maintenance it is possible to have natural hair and to care for natural hair without investing and spending a lot of money on multiple products and the other thing is i mentioned that i have um, a type of dermatitis it's called seborrheic dermatitis um, you can Google it. You probably won't find a lot of examples on African-American skin. You can get it anywhere on your body. So I get it on my scalp, but also on my face, like in my eyebrows, around my nose and things like that. So I do wash regularly because it'll build up. It'll start scaling and flaking if I don't keep it washed regularly. And the usual advice for natural hair, for, for black hair in general, is to wash less, is to not wash as much because it'll dry your hair out, um, it'll contribute to breakage and things like that. One, since I'm not really focused on growing my hair longer or growing my hair more quickly, I'm not really concerned, as concerned about that, but also it's a trade-off for me, right? So I do rely on adding moisture to my hair because I do wash so frequently, um, but most black people don't have dermatitis, right? So I'm atypical in that sense, right? Most people are, don't have to deal with the buildup on their scalp and can go a couple of weeks, multiple weeks without washing, which then makes the maintenance of natural hair that much easier, right? Um, the other thing is laid edges. I mentioned how I never, I don't worry about y'all. You can see for yourself how I style my hair from week to week. You all have been seeing me and watching me, you know, post selfies and things like that. So it's pretty clear that I don't have like the baby hair slicked down or whatever. I just put the scarf on it and that's what I have. Um, and then the last thing in terms of hair rules or expectations is I, some, sometimes when I twist my hair or plait it, right, it'll be sticking up in these kind of like random ways. And so I learned to get comfortable with that. Now, that was something I had to learn to get comfortable with, right? Like, because we're, we're told for so long that if something's sticking up, that's bad. Like, I remember people getting teased if their ponytail stood up, right? Or people getting teased, you know, if their plaits stood up or stuck up, right? And so it does take time. It takes effort. It takes patience and self-compassion to learn to be okay with the fact that that's a natural feature of my hair. My hair, that's how it naturally acts. We don't make fun of white people for their hair naturally falling, right? Because their hair doesn't stick up. Like, why is your hair falling flat? Why isn't your hair, you know, up? Why is it doesn't have volume, right? And that's the other thing. When I talk about natural black hair, I emphasize natural black hair because people of other races are also wearing natural hair, right? White people get to wear their natural hair. Asian people get to wear their natural hair. Um, Native American people get to wear their natural hair. It's black people who have the most pressure, who feel the most pressure to alter the natural texture of our hair. Um, and so when I say natural hair, I always 
describe it as natural black hair specifically, right? Because there's, the world has no problem with natural European hair. The world has no problem with natural Indian hair. The world has no problem with natural Asian hair, right? It's only natural black hair that the world has a problem with. And the strategies that I've used and that I recommend for other people and that other people have recommended to me um, there are, I have six, right? And then I'll read, I have six that I came up with and five that people left in the comments. So the first one is to seek loving images of natural black hair. Last week I talked about how, I talked about how Im negative images, stereotypes, caricatures, um, nasty memes, right, about black folks are even just cartoons and movies. I talked about an episode of Blackish, right? These negative depictions of natural black hair. And so what we have to do is we have to actively, proactively seek channels where we can get affirming images of black hair, right? Again, we live in an era with social media and um, you know, on demand streaming where we have more autonomy, we have more control over that, over what we see and what we consume than ever before. And so there are lots of natural black hair care and um, social media accounts, right? I tagged some in my post from Monday. And there, there's a magazine out now that strictly caters to natural black hair. And well, I don't know if it's always natural. It seems like it's always natural, but it might not be. I'm not sure. But definitely very much about, you know, black women's natural beauty. And it's called Crown Mag. Um, I know Issa Rae was on one of their covers. And what I love about Crown Magazine is that when I say loving images, they really have artistic, like beautifully shot, beautifully photographed images of black women in their natural hair. It is art. It's not just your, like your typical hairstyle magazine where you like have a hairstyle and you take a picture of it. Like they turn not only the hair into artwork, but the photographs are such so lovely and so loving images of natural black hair is important right because we see a lot of images of black people in their hair that are not loving that are hateful and harmful and shameful right and so the the tenderness and the the care and the effort the artistry of the way crown magazine depicts black women with their natural hair and their various hairstyles i think is part of what makes it such an amazing um, publication. Um, and the second thing is really important. And this is, can be applied to any type of implicit bias that you want to work through. And that is to observe your thoughts and your feelings about natural hair, right? And without passing judgment. So I mentioned, you know, me when I first started going natural and wearing my hair out and twists and um, sometimes my twists would stick up and I couldn't make them lay down. And so learning gradually over time to get comfortable with that. And so just recognizing like, okay, yeah, I am a little nervous to walk out of the house right now. Like that's a legitimate fear I have had, not only about my hair, but also about the way I used to dress. I used to have this like really quirky style of dressing. And I would feel nervous or tense about walking to class are you know going to school with my hair that way and paying attention to that that self-awareness right so when you catch the thoughts when you're able to catch the thoughts when you're able to recognize the thoughts then you have the power to undo them then you have the power to change them but as long as everything is an unconscious thing for you then it's going to continue unimpeded right so you have to bring it to the surface of your conscious awareness if you want to address it um, a third thing, which is kind of related, is to journal about those things. So start to recognize and observe your thoughts and feelings, but then actually dig deeper. Think critically about why you feel that way. Why do you feel so nervous leaving the house, right? What messages about your hair and about natural black hair were you exposed to when you were younger that you're still exposed to now, right? And kind of unpack that. Trace the roots of where those fears our anxieties about wearing your natural hair come from. And then a fourth thing is to delete the negative messages. So yes, you seek out the positive messages, but at the same time, you can lessen your exposure to negative messages. You can't always avoid it because the world 
has a lot of hate in it. It has a lot of love, yes, but it, there's also a lot of hate, especially towards blackness in the world. And so you might encounter it from time to time, but you can do what you can to set boundaries with that, right? So um, unfollowing accounts that do not affirm natural black hair, um, not watching certain TV shows that make black hair the butt of the joke, right? And then the fifth thing is to actively affirm natural black hair. Again, no matter what your race is, start to say out loud compliments, right? And you want to do this without exoticizing black hair because I mentioned earlier that we also want to normalize it. If we can make this hairstyle just as normal as the way... Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a white celebrity. <laughs> that Ariana Grande, right? The way she wears her hair, right? If we can normalize afros just the way ponytails are normal, um, then I think we'll also see progress in that area. But compliment women when they're wearing their hair natural. Compliment yourself when you're wearing your hair natural. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, your hair is so cool. That's that. I don't actually like that compliment, your hair is so cool. <laughs> Because usually it's coming from white people and that is a form of othering, right? It kind of others the person with Afro textured hair or natural hair. It's so cool as in it's so different. Oh, it's so unique, right? And I say that because it shouldn't be because the vast majority of black people on the planet have hair like this. They just choose not to wear it this way, right? And so it actually is not abnormal. So billions of people on the planet have hair that grows from their scalp in a very curly pattern. And the fact that it seems unusual is part of the problem, right? Um, and then the last thing is to advocate for natural black hair. Not the last thing for the live, but in terms of these six strategies is to advocate for natural black hair. So this can be, if you're in a position of authority in any way, making sure that the policies at your workplace or the, or the policies at the school that you work at are not racist, right? Um, advocate to abolish policies about not wearing braids to school or, you know, having your hair be a certain length or locks, right? But then also, when you hear people making negative jokes, when you hear people teasing someone because their hair is short and curly or because their hair is sticking up, right? Step in. Say something, speak up, say, hey, that's not funny, right? Saying like, that's a natural way for hair to be. And it shouldn't be seen as a shameful thing, right? Um, so being an advocate for natural black hair. Um, all right, let me read some of the comments that have come in. And then I'm going to read the five really good suggestions that came in on Monday from the audience who commented on the post have to catch up with all my waves. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're tuning in late, you can still introduce yourself. You can still let me know where you're coming from or where you're watching from. Um, Janelle Crutch says, that's the best. Let our hair do what it do. Let it do what it do, baby. Um, hey, Twin Nation, what's up? Hey, Sarah, Mixed Bloom Room. All right, okay, cool. So I didn't miss any comments. <laughs> and so the the audience question not questions suggestions for things that they do to love their hair or show love for their hair were really really good um and so the first one came from willa the wisp at willa the wisp and they commented that there was a book called skin deep that they read over and over again when they were younger and so i love that as a strategy for learning to love natural black hair is there are books that you can read. And this book, Skin Deep, was an, um, a celebration of black models through, throughout history, right? And so if you have kids or if you want to remother yourself, parent, reparent yourself, um, expose yourself to books like that. And don't just glance at them once, but review them over and over again. Um, Willa the Wisp also mentioned that her mom was natural, right? And my mom was also natural before I went natural. And so having a mother as a role model. And so mothers out there, black mothers in particular, 
your daughters are watching you. So even if you tell your daughter that they're beautiful, they're also going to watch how you present yourself. So if you tell your daughter, oh, natural hair is beautiful, but they never see you take the chance to wear your natural hair, you're sending conflicting messages, right? And Bell Hooks talks about that. Um, she talks about having a conversation with a black mother who, you know, was sad that her daughter didn't feel love for her hair. But Bell Hooks commented on the fact that the mother also was not modeling that for the daughter, right? Was not being a role model for the daughter to show her what it means to love your natural hair. And then another um, audience comment came from at Chris Show Writes. C-H-R-I-S-C-E-A-U-X writes. And so this person might be from Louisiana or might have a French background with the E-A-U-X spelling there. Um, but at Chris Show writes said, um, I was, no, I wash and go more often to work out and about to dinner, etc. Just going with the fro slash flow. So I like that example. I did a, an Instagram reel about my wash and go routine. Because um, a lot of people feel like you can't wash and go if you have natural type 4 hair. And so Chris Show writes says practicing wash and go more often is helping her accept and love and affirm her natural hair just the way it is. So not feeling like you have to always do a twist out, right? And not feeling like you always have to plait it or braid it or style it, right? Um, again, last week I talked about how white women will wash their hair and walk out of the house with it still wet and let it dry on their way to work. And black women feel like we can't do that. We feel like we don't have that same um, luxury to be able to just wash and go. But we can. We can. It's a perspective shift, right? And so challenging herself to do that more often, I think, is a really practical strategy. Um, a third one came from Tony V. Murphy, at Tony V. Murphy. I don't know if any of these people are watching live, but if you are, thank you for leaving these comments. Um, Tony V. Murphy said a really, really good one. She said, in my big life moments, I wear my natural hair, e.g. graduation. This one is huge. Okay, let me tell you, because I've seen so many women who wear their natural hair on an everyday basis, but when they get married when they go to prom, when they graduate, they straighten their hair, they press it, they flat iron it, or they put in a weave or a wig, right, for the special occasion. And there's something, um, there's something about the belief that special occasions require straight hair that disaffirms your natural hair, right, and that further privileges the value, the perceived value of straight hair, right? And so why is your natural hair not good enough for the special occasions, right? So to be special, um, if it means having straight hair to be special, then it's still a form of anti-blackness, right? We are special naturally. With our natural hair, we are special. The occasion is still special. A lot of people say, I don't feel dressed up unless my hair is straight, unless my hair is pressed, then I know I'm like professional, or I know I mean serious business. Um, even when I was watching How to Get Away with Murder, and there was a lot of um, talk about how Viola Davis sometimes wore her natural hair on the show. And I remember reading some tweets about how, you know, when Viola Davis or Annalise Keating puts on the wig, then you know she's about business, right? And so there's this association about being your best when your hair is straight. And I think that's a harmful message. Um, Jandel Crutch, what's up, Jandy? Good example of being able to walk out with wet hair. And Jandel Crutch, we are special naturally, yes. Bree Bree NYC, Bronx 2NC. <laughs> that's a really cool name. I associated loving my natural hair with my weight loss journey. The freedom to sweat every day with working out and getting healthy, I embrace my curls and the ability to wash and go. Whoa, thank you so much for that comment, Riri. That is so true. When I did the Instagram Live on sports, on colorism in sports, the hair piece came up, right? Or that, that hair issue came up. 
And it's, it's really sad how our hair has kept so many black women from enjoying themselves, from being free to sweat whenever they want, however much they want. Um, our hair has kept us literally from playing sports in some cases, from swimming, from, you know, doing whatever, right? And so that freedom that comes with being natural and not having to worry about sweating out your press, your press and go or sweat out your perm or sweat out your relaxer, it is radical freedom, right? And it's, it's really sad that we've been sort of chained to hair in that way. Um, and the, the health piece, um, I remember watching an episode of Melissa Harris Perry when she had her show on MSNBC. She brought on Nicole Ari Parker who had developed a, um, a type of head wrap, right? That would allow black women to sweat without messing up their hair, right? So to speak. But that was part of the conversation is how so many black women forego sweating strictly because of their hair. And so I love, I love that example so much. Um, all right, so another one that came in from the audience was Sarah Boussoulet. I spelled B-E-S-S-U-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. <laughs> I'm an English professor, but there are so many screen names I can't pronounce. <laughs> but I'm doing phonetic pronunciation. And so at Sarah Boussoulet says, she read the book Living Color. So I have not read the book Living Color, but I'm throwing it out there as another option for people to read and understand the, the kinds of things we have to unlearn, especially as black people, but all people need to unlearn this, right? All pe white people, um, Asian people, like anyone can have a negative perception about black hair. In fact, most people have negative perceptions or stigmas or biases against natural black hair. So the whole world needs to learn how to love natural black hair. Um, and then another one came from Hippie Chick Joy, and these earrings I'm wearing were also are also from Hippie Chick Joy. She makes earrings, so check her out on Instagram. Um, this is a good one. So she said she stopped using the word nappy, and she had a conversation with a coworker, and she said just because my curl was tighter than hers, it was no less a curl by definition. And so this notion that curly hair is for people with like 2C or 3A hair, right? Or, you know, curly hair. <laughs> well, you got curly hair, right? Um, type 4 hair, 4C hair, it's technically still a curl. It's just a tighter curl or a smaller curl, right? A more condensed curl. And so, you know, she said that her coworker was frustrated and upset that she dared to call it, say, you have curly hair. And I think that's so interesting because that, that word, it's a technical term, but we've associated it with only certain types of curls, right? And it's become a label of privilege and status, especially amongst black people, like in the United States, I don't know about black folks elsewhere, but that you know label of curly hair was synonymous with good hair being keeping it 100 right if you say oh you got curly hair that was another way of saying that person had good hair and so i think reclaiming language changing up the use of language in a, in a way um, um as a way to subvert that idea so that was a recommendation from hippie chick joy so those were the audience question audience suggestions that came in on monday um some of us so Bree says some of us are hostages to having and maintaining straight hair. Absolutely. So, okay, Riri NYC, BX to NC. I love that you worded it that way. I love that you articulated that. Because when people say natural hair is high maintenance, I, I really want to stress the fact that you put, black women have put so much effort and so much money into maintaining straight hair that it's, it's almost like cognitive dissonance to say, oh, it's harder to maintain my natural hair when the hoops that you jump through to keep your hair straight, to me, seem way more strenuous and way more restrictive. And like you said, being hostage to that, right? Um, yeah. Best wheel. Oh, best wheel. Oh, you're on, you're watching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for correcting. My pronunciation was completely off. 
Oh goodness. Um, sable, sable. Uh, I don't know what that word is. I'm not see. Y'all know. Give me the phonetic pronunciation whenever possible. Um, Danelle Crutch says, I like the concept that the tighter curl pattern is actually more curly. Mm, that's a good point. Um, he said, no one gets it right. No worries. Thank you. Um, but I like the name S-A-R-A-H, though. That I like that part of it. We can relate. Name twins. I have a couple of name twins out there, which is always nice. Um, all right, folks. So this one was a little quicker than normal. Um, we kept it to 35 minutes. But hopefully you all continue in being natural hair lovers and spreading that love for natural hair to your friends, family, the larger community. I think we have so far to go in undoing the stigma about natural black hair. 